In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the F11 key to literally save myself hours of time when creating my YouTube videos. What does it do exactly? Well, it's actually the keyboard shortcut for replace, which simply allows you to replace things on your timeline, which on its own doesn't sound very fun, exciting, or even particularly useful, but trust me, it is. Unless, of course, you're on a Mac where the F11 key just minimizes everything and shows you the desktop by default, which is not very useful. To get around that, you need to open up the preferences within macOS, go to keyboard, shortcut, mission control, and then disable the F11 key. Wow. But anyway, how is it so useful? Well, I'm going to open up DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to give you a demonstration, plus there's some other little tips and tricks in there to show you how to create some really great looking content quickly and easily in DaVinci Resolve. So let's open it up and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve. Now I've got my A-roll set up down here, and then I've got this little adjustment clip. And what this does is it blurs and darkens the background, so then I can drop images or text or whatever on top, and it's really nice and clear. Now I'm not going to cover how I made that adjustment clip in this video, but make sure you stick around, because very soon I will make a video showing you exactly how to make this awesome reusable little element which you can just drop into your effects library. So what we're going to do, I'm going to grab an image, I'm going to put it on top and we'll lengthen this out. Now this is something which I'm going to need over and over again throughout the duration of this video, but with a different image. And that's where we use the F11 key. But before we get to that, let me just show you a few quick tricks to make this look really, really good. First things first, I'm going to open up the inspector. I'm going to go to transform, we're just going to zoom this out a little bit. So then we've got this nice blurry background with our image in the middle. I personally would then just turn on the dynamic zoom open up the dynamic zoom by clicking on this little drop down here and go to dynamic zoom and then we're just going to change this green box so it's only just a little bit smaller than the red box and then we get this really nice little bit of movement within the image it's not too much it's not distracting it's just quite nice i'm then just going to open up the effects library i'm going to come down to open effects i'm going to scroll right down until i get to the stylized area drop shadow we're going to drop that on there as well so now if i hit play i've got this image Nice blurry background, nice bit of movement, bit of a drop shadow, all that sort of fun stuff. I want to animate the image, so I'm going to go to my video transitions, still within the effects library. Let's just get the push one, because I know that's good. I'm going to drop that on the image there like so. We'll give that a click. In the inspector, I'm going to just go to ease, in and out, give it a little bit of motion blur, maybe make it a tiny bit shorter. We're going to move it in a little bit, and then if we hit play, our image pops in like so. I want to duplicate this transition for the end, so I'm going to give it a click so it's highlighted in red, hold the Alt key, drag over so it's a nice duplicate, trim that in just a smidge, and now we've got this element. Image pops in, it's animated, it looks good, we've got our blurry background, and then the image pops out. So that looks cool, right? Super quick, easy to make, and actually looks really, really good. Now we need to duplicate it. So I want this to happen all over my timeline. So what I'm going to do, highlight all of that, so it's all highlighted in red. Hold the Alt key, drag to duplicate like so. If you've missed my video talking all about the Alt key and how amazingly, incredibly useful it is, make sure to check that out. I've linked it up here somewhere and it's also down in the description below. Now, all we need to do is replace this image. We want everything else the same. We just need to use something different here. And this is where our F11 key comes in. So first things first, what you need to do, put your playhead at the beginning of the clip, not the beginning of the transition, the beginning of the actual clip there like so. Then you need to make sure that you've set your primary track. So the primary track is this little red box here. You can see currently it's on video one. We need to change it to video three. So I'm just gonna click where it says V3. That will go red and it says V1. So now that's listed as our primary track. Now we can just open up our media pool. I'm gonna find a different image. So let's just go with this one and then hit the F11 key. Boom, on the timeline, Everything else stays exactly the same, but the image has been replaced. So we still have our transitions. We still have all of our transforms is exactly the same. The dynamic zoom is there. We've even got the drop shadow effect is there as well. So we don't need to mess around setting it all up again. It's all there, ready to go. Let's do that again. Highlight, Alt, drag, put my playhead in the right place. We'll grab another image. Let's go with this one, F11, boom done. If I wanted to change the transitions, I can just give it a click. At the very top of transition, you've got transition type. We can change this. Let's just go with a radial wipe for whatever reason. And there you go. Simple, easy, super fast. Now this even works with keyframes. So let's just do some nonsense on this. I'm going to give this image a click in the inspector, 
video. I'm going to set a keyframe on the rotation angle. We're going to come right to the end and we'll change that to 360. So now if I hit play, the image is just going to spin around 360 degrees. I know that doesn't look great, but it's just an example. Now we're going to copy this once again, highlight it all, hold alt, click, drag, put the playhead in the right place. This time we're going to grab a video because it's not just images, it works with video too. So I'm going to double click. This is the video we're going to use. I'll hit the F11 key. Boom. It's put it in place of the image. We've still got everything else the same. And if I hit play, the keyframes are still there as well because we've got a 360 degree spin. You see what I mean? It's awesome. This is what I do for all of my news videos. As long as I've got my images selected, just copy, paste, copy, paste, replace the element, the image, the video, whatever. It's a really, really nice way of working and building up your timeline super quick. Now it even works for text. Now in the effects library, I'm gonna to go to titles. Now the F11 key doesn't work here. You can't use the keyboard shortcut. Fortunately, there's a drag and drop method as well, which does work. So I'm gonna grab this text. It could be any of the titles, but I'm just gonna go with the plain text. And what you want to do, drag it, not over here, but instead drag it up to your preview window. If you've got the two preview windows open, you wanna to go to the one over on the right hand side. And this little menu will appear. Then you just need to hover over replace and then release your mouse. And it's changed that image to be text. But once again, everything's still there. We've still got our transition. So the text pops in. I can then give the text a click, do whatever I want and job done. You can quickly replace images and videos with a title, but it doesn't work the other way. If you've got a title and you put a video on it, you will lose the transition. So just bear that in mind. You're always better off copying a video or a image on your timeline rather than copying one of the titles to do this. Now to finish off, it doesn't just work for this element here. Let me just copy this one over here. We'll put our playhead this time at the beginning of our adjustment clip. We need to change our primary track. So I'm just going to go to video two, click on V2. So that's highlighted in red. At the minute, it's got the blur and dark and adjustment clip, but let's say I just want a colored background instead. I'm going to go to my generators. I've got my solid color. Again, the F11 key won't work. So instead, I'm just going to drag up. We'll go to replace. That's replace the adjustment clip with a solid color. I can then just change the color. Let's just go with white for now. And now we've got this effect instead. Hopefully no one hits the F11 key and replaces me with a better DaVinci Resolve instructor, teacher, YouTuber, but you never know. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.